While history often spotlights male figures as the epitome of evil, let's not overlook the women who sent shivers down history's spine. This list delves into the unsettling stories of women whose dark actions have left an enduring mark on history, so much so that it might have been better that they never existed. So join us as we reveal the true stories of the top 10 evil women in history we wish were never born. Number 10, Elizabeth Bathory. Elizabeth Bathory, commonly referred to as the Blood Countess, occupies a pretty creepy place in history as a Hungarian noblewoman with a notorious reputation. She is believed to be one of the most prolific female serial killers in history, earning her eerie nickname from the gruesome practice of bathing in the red red of her victims. This ritual was apparently rooted in her belief that it could preserve her youthfulness, and it sounds like some pretty extreme anti-aging to me. Operating during the late 16th and early 17th centuries within the walls of her castle, now located in modern day Slovakia, Bathory subjected an estimated 650 girls to unimaginable horrors. Her reign of terror reached its thankful end on December 30th, 1610, when Elizabeth, along with four accomplices, faced arrest following an investigation into the disturbing rumors surrounding her actions. Despite the severity of the accusations though, a lack of concrete evidence prevented the claims from being substantiated. However, the absence of solid proof did not grant her leniency, and she was confined to her castle until her eventual passing. Her evil deeds and the whole blood-soaked castle deal make her a heavyweight in the true crime scene. It's a legitimate horror story with more questions than answers. Would probably make a great horror film though. And in at number nine today is Ma Barker. Ma Barker, a notorious figure in US criminal history, served as the leader of the feared Barker gang, which her sons were also a part of. Gaining the title of the FBI's public enemy number one, Barker orchestrated a series of robberies, murders, and kidnappings across the American Midwest in the early 1930s. Her life came to a pretty explosive end in 1935 during a prolonged standoff in her Florida hideout, setting a record as the longest standoff in FBI history. J. Edgar Hoover, the FBI's first director, once described her as the most vicious, dangerous, and resourceful criminal brain of the last decade. Hoover's description added to Ma Barker's mysterious reputation, solidifying her reputation as one of the most evil women of all time. Number eight, Belle Gunness. Belle Gunness holds the disturbing title of one of America's worst female serial killers. Even before considering her terrifying actions, she was already an imposing and physically intimidating woman, standing six feet tall and weighing over 200 pounds. It was alleged that she was responsible for the passing of her husbands, younglings, numerous suitors, boyfriends, and even her own daughters, Myrtle and Lucy. Belle's motive was pretty simple. Greed. She gained income by stealing life insurance and assets from her victims. Reports suggest her victim count exceeds 20, with some claiming it could be over 100. Inconsistencies in her postmortem examination, such as the reported height being two inches shorter than Belle's six feet, contributed to her becoming a figure in American criminal folklore, often compared to a female bluebeard, because people will make things up and just run with it sometimes. Number seven, Griselda Blanco. Born in 1943, Griselda Blanco, known by her aliases of La Madrina, or the Black Widow, emerged as a frightening figure in the criminal underworld. Hailing from Colombia, she etched her name in history as one of the most ruthless and feared queen pins ever known. Blanco's notoriety reached its peak as a key player in the notorious Medellin Cartel, a criminal empire synonymous with violence and illicit trade. What sets Blanco apart is her unexpected role as a mentor to none other than Pablo Escobar. However, as fate would have it, their relationship eventually soured, paving the way for a rivalry that would echo through criminal history. Blanco's criminal empire revolved around the transportation of a certain illegal powdery substance from the fields of Colombia to the streets of the United States. This calculated operation, coupled with her alleged involvement in up to 200 people being ushered to the pearly gates, showcased Blanco's audacity and cunning in a male-dominated realm. Her ability to not only navigate but dominate such a perilous environment proved her prowess as a criminal mastermind. Following a stint behind bars, Blanco's life met a chilling end on September 3rd, 2012, when she was wiped out in a hail of lead, leaving a void in the criminal landscape she once ruled. I'm all for girl power, but uh, let's just put that energy somewhere else, shall we? Cool. 
Number six, Christiana Edmonds. Christiana Edmonds, also known as the chocolate cream killer, was an English woman with a really disturbing hobby. She would purchase chocolates, lace them with strychnine, a powerful and toxic chemical, and then return them to the shop. Unexpecting customers who bought those chocolates would naturally fall ill. In 1871, a tragic incident occurred when a young person passed away after consuming one of the poisoned chocolates. Now following this, Edmonds escalated her campaigning by sending parcels of her dangerous chocolates to notable individuals. As the police began linking the fatal and damaging outcomes to the chocolates, Edmonds attempted to deflect suspicion by sending parcels to herself in order to mislead the police. How intelligent. Once she was caught, Edmonds was initially sentenced to death, but her punishment was later changed to life imprisonment due to her mental illness. Number five, Mary the First of England. Born on February 18, 1516, Mary the First held the throne as Queen of England and Ireland from July 1553 until her passing. As the only surviving child of the marriage between Henry VIII and his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, Mary the First's reign is notable for her brutal persecution of Protestants, earning her infamous moniker, Bloody Mary. Her attempt to forcefully return England to Catholicism resulted in the forced passing of numerous prominent Protestants, contributing to a climate of fear and leading around 800 Protestants to flee the country, unable to return until her passing. During her reign, Bloody Mary implemented the Heresy Laws, which resulted in the burning of over 300 Protestants accused of heresy. Despite the widespread violence, Mary I was never prosecuted for her actions. However, after her passing on November 17, 1558, the winds of change swept through England, ushering away from her staunch Catholic policies. The efforts to reestablish Catholicism were ultimately reversed, marking a turning point in the religious landscape of England. Mary I's reign entwined with religious strife and political turmoil remains a complex chapter in history where power, ideology, and the consequences of persecution shape the course of a nation. Number four, Wu Zetian. Between 665 and 690, Wu Zetian controlled China as empress through her husband, and later as empress dowager through her sons. However, in 690, she achieved a historic milestone by becoming Empress, marking her as China's first and only official recognized female ruler. Wu Zetian maintained her authoritarian position from 690 until her passing in 705. Now, despite the significant achievements in expanding China's territory and establishing it as a powerful empire, her reign was unfortunately also marked by violence and bloodshed. Wu Zetian's rise to power was marked by a series of manipulative and ruthless tactics. She orchestrated the downfall of her political rivals, resorting to schemes such as false accusations, purges, anything to eliminate potential threats. While her success in building a powerful empire is acknowledged, she has faced enduring criticism for the ruthless tactics employed to do so. Number three, Mary Ann Cotton. Mary Ann Cotton, who lived in the 1800s, left behind a criminal tale that's not all neatly documented. Back then, record keeping wasn't the greatest, so we're left with a bit of a puzzle when it comes to the exact details of her evil actions. But it's estimated that Cotton might have offed around 21 people. Three of them were unlucky husbands, and a whopping 11 were her very own family. She had this not so friendly habit of using arsenic to bring their lives to an end, and then cashing in on their life insurance policies. The party came to a screeching halt however, when she attempted this method on her stepson, Charles Edward Cotton, leading to her capture and the grand finale, a date with the executioner. Now, here's where it gets interesting. They gave her a short rope, instead of the customary long one. This meant that instead of physics causing her neck to snap, she instead suffered a long, slow, agonizing suffocation. Number two, Mary Piercy. Mary Piercy, born in 1866, lived in Kentish Town, North London, with her lover, Charles Creighton. Feeling unsatisfied with life, at the age of 24, Mary sought more, leading her to become romantically involved with a man named Frank Hogg. However, it seems that Frank was also already spoken for, being already married to his pregnant wife, Phoebe. The dark events unfolded on October 24th, 1890, when a policeman discovered the almost severed body of a woman in Crossfield Road, Hampstead, along with a blood-stained pram. Mary's association with the crime drew attention when she displayed hysterical behavior at the mortuary while viewing the body of the deceased woman, later identified as Phoebe Hanelow, Frank Hogg's wife. The next day, the lifeless body of Hogg's daughter was found near Finchley Road, a mile away. This time, the cause was suffocation. 
As the police became more and more aware of the affair between Frank and Mary, they searched Mary's house and found broken furniture and bloodstains. Mary, seemingly unfazed, played the piano and sang loudly during the search. The police ended up uncovering an axe, two knives, bloodstained clothing, and love letters between the illicit couple. Mary's attempts to explain the stains as a result of taking out mice was met with understandable skepticism. The police gathered evidence from neighbors who had witnessed Mary wheeling a pram away from the house on the evening of October 24th and heard screams from her residence. The disturbing truth emerged during the trial at the Old Bailey in December 1890. Mary's defense claimed insanity, but it proved unsuccessful, resulting in her sentencing to be sent to hell. On December 23rd, 1890, at Newgate Prison, Mary Piercy faced execution by hanging orchestrated by James Barry, just over a decade after her father, Thomas Wheeler, met a similar fate for a similar crime. I guess it kind of runs in the family. Number one, Delphine LaLaurie. Delphine LaLaurie, who, Delphine LaLaurie was a prominent New Orleans socialite who lived during the early 19th century. She's infamously remembered for her role in one of the city's most gruesome and horrifying scandals. Born Mary Delphine McCarty in 1787, LaLaurie married three times and became a central figure in New Orleans high society. However, her reputation took a pretty dark turn when her mistreatment of people that she kept forcibly endured came to light. Reports of extreme cruelty and sadistic practices circulated, revealing the disturbing treatment of servants within the LaLaurie mansion. In 1834, a fire at the mansion exposed a hidden chamber where individuals were discovered in appalling conditions, subjected to unimaginable horrors. The shocking revelations sparked public outrage and Delphine LaLaurie fled the city, leaving behind a legacy of cruelty that continues to haunt the historical narrative of New Orleans. And there you have it. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. I'm your host, Adam Andrews. You're watching Bumblebee. We'll be sure to catch you next time, but until then, stay safe and well-informed out there. Toodles.